I'm bugging out in a really good way. New Tyranid models are here. Thank you, GW, for sending me a review copy that I could paint up. I'm really excited about these new designs and the fresh take on the Biovore slash Pyrovore. Mwah, kiss the hand, right? Anyways, a lot of people have been asking me how I painted my Tyranids in the previous Leviathan vlog where I documented how I painted my Tyranids, so I'll make another video on how those Tyranids were painted today. So after taking a brief look back at that previous video, I got out all the old colors and started to bring the Biovore to life. Let's get into it. A thick base coat was laid down. This is a mixture of black, murderous magenta, and dark Prussian blue. I will have a list of colors in the description below. I also believe you could find an out-of-the-bottle color to match this, but me, I mixed these colors up and that's what I got. So lay it on nice and thick all over everything. I apologize if there's any kind of uh, noise bleeding in, there's some kind of high wind, possible life-threatening situation going on outside, but come on, nothing bad ever happens anyways. But after the wet thickness has turned to a dry thinness, I want you to take out your airbrush and lay down a nice zenithal coat of Majestic Fortress. It's nice and thin, I'm leaning into the transparency. Let it gradually build in a series of thin coats for optimal smoothness. But after that, you can risk it all and possibly screw your smoothness up a little bit, like me, and load some underbelly blue into the airbrush, and again, following along the areas that you already covered with the Majestic Fortress, I want you to cover a little bit less of that with the underbelly blue. Um, I think this, this coat came out, I could have diluted it a, a bit more, I think that was my problem, but also I had, had a way of not caring about anything. I know that later this will be submerged underneath a wash, I can blend on top of it, etc., but do better than me. I did okay. Now, previously, my Tyranid color scheme has been described as lazy and something he probably did in a single evening. I fucking wish. But my challenge to you is to see if you can get this done in an evening. So, moving on, we'll pick out certain chitinous areas with a nice base coat of red. I lay this down in three layers. It's going to have a lot of fighting to do coming up over such a murky base coat, and I want these colors to read true, so get a nice, robust red. Once that is in place, though, follow it up with a little Cador Red base. Just a nice, even, clean, candy apple red. And, if you're feeling talented, feel free to follow along the kind of sculpted texture lines of these chitinous plates. Time to wash up, you filthy animal. Clean your hands before you're touching yourself and your miniatures. But also, washes are something you can use to lay on top of a model to combine all the tones beneath. I'll be laying down a diluted mixture of Coelia Nightshade. This goes over the red, all that murky purple and airbrushing. The whole damn thing, just getting a nice all-over tint Coelia Nightshade. Sweet dreams. And while all that is drying, if you can keep yourself from touching the model, I want you to lay down a nice thick coat of deep ocean on the base. Then, mix in some deep yellow into the deep ocean. We're getting very deep and dry brush that mixture atop the textures. Then, after that is fully dry, add a little bit of white to your yellow and deep ocean mixture and just bring it up one more time. You don't have to be completely even with this. You can do it kind of in a spotty approach, picking up on some of the raised areas or just creating uh, pockets of density. The sacks, oftentimes they're filled with parasitic spores and today it's no different. First drop down some white. It will make the next moment of your life much easier, I promise. Then, I'm wet blending deep yellow and emerald together. As the membrane is stretched, as it's wrapping over the balls inside of the sack, I want it to appear thinner so that is where I'm building up the brightness, just being a pure deep yellow. After the blended wetness, I went in with more emerald and deep yellow, but this time diluting and layering maybe sometimes creating a mixture that mimics the kind of half and half mixture of the previous wet blended stage, mix and match, blend it out, make it a little smoother. Wet blending is not a finishing technique, but something that makes your life a lot faster, and we're all just trying to get to the end of life. So you want to smooth that out with some diluted layers, but save yourself some time. I'm hung up on the life thing. 
Next up, I wanted to deeper define those lumps with a little shading. I took some black and some emerald, mixed it to kind of a emerald gray, we'll call it, and just very small areas, kind of sweeping uh, just the slightest of shadow just on the bottom side of where any of those lumps might be budding out of the sack. Then some veins of yellow and white were drawn on. After all, I'm trying to simulate a very sickly thin membrane, so just taking some deep yellow with a little bit of white to draw the vein on. And then I, I took some of the yellow and mixed it to the emerald to trace the, the vein path as it went through a shadow. Of course, I want to acknowledge that and just make sure the vein in the shaded area is a little deeper, just like everything else. This next one's a quick step. You want to be picking out those beady little eyes with a coat of deep yellow, and any holes you may have found are going to get a coat of murderous magenta. Don't be afraid to really lay it in there as well. One shot, one kill, I'm laying just a heavy amount of murderous magenta into those little holes. I don't want to come back and touch these holes again. Now, a long step, but a short one to record. I think you get it. Edge highlighting. So I'm just taking underbelly blue and highlighting the whole damn piece. The, the skin, the red, everything gets a highlight of underbelly blue. This is a bit of a time saver. I like the look it produces. Yeah, just some quick edge highlighting. I'm just burning up time so I can show a little bit of footage of the, this step. It's the most lengthy one though. I have to get in there and be really detailed and pick out every little nook. And these models are beautifully detailed. So dare I say I enjoyed painting. And here we are at the finish line, or more like the five yard line. The edge of glory. I have one step left for myself. And what I want you to do is take some Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, some Burnt Sienna ink, and these tiny glass beads that I found. It's, it's a scrapbooking texturing tool. I've purchased a lifetime amount of these by buying one bag like eight years ago. I don't know where it came from. You can find them. Just please look before you ask me where you can find tiny glass beads for embossing or scrapbooking. Anyways, mix all of these ingredients into a casserole of digestive fluid, also known as vomit. Spread it out all over the area if you want to go back and drop some clumps of those beads. I'm trying to mimic egg sacs, and yes, those are little pieces of pasta on the base. Watch the last video. I don't know. I just assume everybody has watched everything, but that's uh, not a good assumption. I hope you had fun watching this video. I'm not assuming that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to know about more Tiernid painting, I've mentioned it a few times, I have that vlog, but I also have a video called Tiernid Special Effects in which I detail painting the brains, the spore chimneys coming out of the spinal column, and the sacks. But yeah, I love this new biovore and its little spore friends. I can't wait to be simulating combat and killing things in an imagined reality. So oh, so soon, I hope. I can't wait for that book to come out. But anyways, thank you for your support on Patreon. I can't do this without you. I literally can't. I would... I would die. I would die without you. No, that's foolish. I would die if I had to stop eating paint. That is accurate. So until we meet again, my friends, remain unchained.